Hi everybody! I'm here to show you today a game that I like to use in my classroom called Luck of the Draw and it's used uh, for really any type of math concept that I cover I can make a game out of uh, this type of game out of. Um, the example I have for you here has to do with function operations. Um, there's many different ways you can use this game which is why it's so awesome because it won't go stale so quickly for your students. You can like change it up but you're using the same materials over and over which is like the best part because there's like practically no prep involved. So as you can see I have three cups here. I have a yellow, a green, and a red because I'm fancy. And what I do is I have like a little log sheet for the students. I make them do a minimum number of problems um, because I, I work with teenagers and they're only going to do the minimum allowed. So I try to make it like a reasonable number, like 10 or something like that, it, depending on what my goal is for that day. Now there's a couple different ways you can do this. You can make it just a regular practice assignment that just has it's a little bit more spiced up instead of like here's a worksheet for you and a worksheet for you and a worksheet for you it's like hey you pick one from one cup one from the next cup ooh they're color coded even the popsicle sticks oh I don't have green it's because I can't find a color that writes well on the green even the metallics don't look good it's hard to read so anyway you pick one from each cup and they write it down on their paper. So the yellow is one of the functions, red is the other function, and the plain one, which looks to be upside down and backwards to you, sorry, um, at least on my screen, maybe it looks correct for you. I'll have to see you later. But you write them on the sheet. This is saying g of x times f of x. I put on the worksheet that like yellow is g of x and red is f of x, for instance. They write them down, they multiply them, and they're done with that problem at least. They come back, put the sticks in the correct cups, that's why I color code so they know where they go, and they draw again. Yellow, red, regular color in the green cup, and so far and so forth. The cool thing about this, so yeah, I did the regular, like, hey, practice type things, which is really better for reviewing than regular practice. But what you can do is you can turn it into a game, and here's the cool thing about it. You, usually the way I do the games is I have, like, at least four students in a group. I don't do more than four because then there's just people sitting around doing nothing. I wouldn't do less than three, though. So between three and four is the perfect number. And you have one student that's the referee, they still have to do the problem, and you've got two students that are racing each other. And the referee does the problem, and basically the person they agree with is the winner, as long as the winner got the answer first. Um, the cool thing about this is if they all get different answers, they have to kind of fight it out and discuss who's right, which brings in some of those common core, or if you live in Arizona, uh, college and career ready standards. Um, that require them to basically discuss, analyze, explain their reasoning, all those things. I'm not using the proper, term, like, what do you call it, standard titles, but you get what I mean. The other way you can use this as a game is with the whole class together. So let's say you have a day where, or maybe you just have a classroom with a lot of students, you don't think it's practical to break them up into groups like this, you can do like a racing type game where there's two kids at the board and the rest of the class is the referee so everybody's doing the problems I would require them to use the worksheet to prove they're actually doing the problems just a little tip otherwise you have kids just sitting there or you can have them use whiteboards if you don't want to print out worksheets and have them like put the board up so whoever wins at the at the front of the room can see that they won once everybody puts their answers up the other thing you can do, and students tend to really like this because, I don't know, I guess it's an ego thing, race the teacher. Yep, race the teacher. At the high school level, it's a little bit more realistic to race the teacher because in elementary school, when you're just doing like multiplying three times four, of course the teacher's going to win. The teacher should win. If you can't win and you're doing basic multiplication, you need to learn it better, which I don't think is something I need to say, but... I'm just clarifying for people. 
But yeah, you can have them race the teacher, still have the kids with the whiteboards in the class, or like writing the problems down as your referees. And yeah, it's a cool activity. So I suggest trying it out. Um, I know a lot of you, especially, well, all year, are very busy people if you're a teacher, and it can seem overwhelming to have to like come up with stuff and write it on the sticks and put it in the cup and get the cups. So um, I actually do happen to have uh, several products on Teachers Pay Teachers where you can try this out. I have one for free. The link will be in the doobly-doo below. Yes, I'm stealing the Nerdfighteria doobly-doo word because it's a great word. Um, and also just a link to my store. And you can just go download it there, save a little bit of time for yourself. The cool thing is on some of my paid products, I do have it differentiated. So there's like easy, medium, and challenge levels. So you can even set up stations around the classroom and you know, have a tiered differentiation going on, or you could have students progressively move from the easy to the middle to the hard um, as well during their practice. So it's it's a really cool activity and I really like to use it. Um, I also have some for geometry too, so it's not just for you algebra people. So um, I'll see you next time and have a good day or evening or whatever you happen to be watching this particular video. Bye.